Hello everyone, I am Manoj Sinha, co-founder and CEO of Husk Power Systems, a company that is owner and operator of largest mini-grid footprint across two continents in the world that are Asia and Africa. I'm back again to talk about the future of energy and AI, more specifically the predictive AI. So let me ask you this question. Uh, can you imagine building a recommendation engine by analyzing something at a customer's premise and predict or recommend uh, what kind of appliances they may have or they might be using and what appliances they might actually need to better their lifestyle or increase their productivity. The answer is yes, you can. If you actually look at their current and voltage signature, assuming that you do have a smart meter at their premises, uh, you can use the power of machine learning to first learn from different appliances, their current and voltage signature over a 24 hour cycle or over the full seven day cycle. And you can actually use that as a training data set to then predict what appliances this house or this uh, commercial user might be using. And you can use the power of AI to be able to predict what appliances they might not have at home or at commercial establishment and recommend them to use such kind of devices. Very recently, our Prime Minister uh, Modi uh, announced uh, a rooftop solar across uh, millions of households in India, right? for which he has also awarded 75,000 crores of subsidy. What is that scheme? That scheme actually is a decentralized way of electrifying households across the whole India and bringing even more renewable power to the ecosystem. That's great, but how will it all come together and play without destabilizing the grid? Actually, that's where uh, predictive AI uh, will play a huge role in managing these different types of interventions and bringing even more renewable energy to the national grid of India. And that will that is what will make uh, India net zero goal of 2070 uh, very achievable. I think we can achieve by 2050. And it is evolving very fast, as we all know, and uh, I have been speaking about predictive AI so far. Uh, we are now all dealing with uh, Gen AI. Uh, whether it is uh, ChatGPT or Gemini from Google or other platforms that are now available. So we have so far utilized uh, predictive AI uh, to be able to predict demand. So one of the things that I was mentioning is you can actually predict the demand, right? So when the grid uh, has uh, a certain available power and the demand might exceed what power injection might have happened on the grid, what will that mean? That will mean a blackout or brownout in many areas, which is typically called load shedding. That's how traditionally the utilities have managed across the entire world, whether it is India or the United States or Western European countries. But you can do things in a much more uh, granular way and much more efficient way. And what I mean by that in more concrete terms is, Let's say all our air conditioning unit, whether you live in Delhi or Mumbai in India or Lagos in Nigeria, all of those were connected with a smart uh, device that could be controlled by AI. So let's say the power generation is 100 gigawatts and the demand because it is so hot, it is so humid that you have to turn on the AC. Uh, the demand is let's say 125 gigawatt and you cannot generate more power than 100 gigawatts. What will happen is a certain millions of people will be uh, under load shedding, but that's not ideal. What if we could have AI actually reach out to the next million customers and ping us that, hey, uh, would you care to turn off your AC or reduce the AC load to a certain threshold and we will reward you with you know, X dollars or X rupees or X Naira. And that is what can be done in real time using AI to actually manage the demand side, not just the supply side, so that everybody wins and there's no blackout in this particular anecdote that I mentioned. 
So that's what is going to be the next uh, generation of predictive AI uh, from utilities around the world. So let's look at generative AI or Gen AI, which is quite popular these days. Um, and you can create a whole art for yourself using Gen AI. How could Gen AI be used for energy segment or energy sector? In my opinion, customer service or customer satisfaction or both have been largely ignored by large utility companies across the world, whether it is discoms in India, uh, from whom you never receive a call actually, or if you call them, they never pick up the call, or Nigeria, the customer service does not exist, right? Actually, you can use the power of Gen AI to implement a, an unparalleled customer service where customer service does not exist. So that would be one example of what the power of Gen AI could unleash for billions of people that are actually using energy on an everyday basis. So these are two different examples, example set um, that I want to convey both from predictive AI and Gen AI perspective that could revolutionize the energy sector even further and actually make it very cool so that we can attract the most talented folks that we are not able to attract today in the energy segment because it is cool and you will also become part of climate change story so that we do not change the temperature beyond 1.5 degrees Celsius uh, by 2030. It is coolness factor that the AI adds that will attract more talent in the sector and we will all become a part of changing or bending the climate change curve. So, uh, integrating uh, AI or actually uh, uh, we are almost the pioneers of utilizing AI to uh, predict the demand and manage assets uh, in a way that uh, historically or traditionally nobody else has done was quite revealing and I will give an anecdote of what it means in real life. So we were trying to really cut down the diesel consumption uses at sites or mini grid sites that we operate in India uh, as well as in Nigeria especially during monsoon season when we, we get you know two three four days of uh, spat of rainfall and uh, what happens in these cases is in so our mini grid uh, typically consists of uh, solar pv for daytime supply and we have battery bank that can do uh, nighttime uh, supply for the energy demand that exists right so we really want to manage the battery as a uh, storage source so that its lifetime if we are using lead acid is at least five years and it is quite hard to do that especially in the rainy season because the battery charge might drop below 50 percent which is recommended uh, state of charge in this uh, industry and though we had a lot of engineering intervention uh, our process was working okay but our battery health was such that <coughs> <clears throat> excuse me our process of uh, engineering was working well but it was such that we were predicting that our batteries won't last beyond four max four and a half years mainly because during rainy season as well as winter season the state of charge did fall below 50 percent that's when we started tinkering with uh, uh, predictive ai uses to see if that can create some improvements and this was actually totally unexpected. What we saw was the capacity utilization of solar PV actually increased 10 percentage point, which was not even our intention. Diesel consumption did go uh, down by 30, 40%. And most importantly, our battery lifetime that we were predicting only to be five, five years has now gone on and has been serving us uh, up to six years. So that's the power of AI that we have been able to build to actually increase the life of the asset by maintaining the health of the asset at an optimum level, which would not be possible without an algorithmic way of managing these assets. Human interventions are great. Uh, I'm an engineer myself, uh, electrical and electronics for that matter, but my uh, own intelligence reached a saturation point when our processes were applied. Uh, when we changed it to uh, AI-based management system, 
Uh, it is not only that the diesel consumption uh, fell by 30-40%, but also the battery life increased by 20-25%. And to our complete um, uh, surprise, solar capacity utilization went up by 10%. So that's the power of AI that uh, happened actually at our sites, both in India and Nigeria. Uh, some of these were totally unexpected in a positive manner. So that's the efficiency that AI can bring beyond what a human uh, mind and human built processes can build uh, or make available to these uh, systems. The energy segment or energy sector as a whole is a truly rising tide in the current economy and it is going to be so for the next two to three decades. There is a definitive need of investing trillions of dollars over the next decade for us to do a just energy transition from you know, today's mostly fossil fueled energy economy to largely renewable energy economy. So just energy transition does require an investment uh, to the tune of trillions of dollars over the next decade or so. That's why I was referring to this as a rising tide. For the next generation of innovators and next generation of uh, leaders and managers who want to be in this sector and actually cause the climate change curve bending process, uh, it is an amazing opportunity to, to actually come join this sector and be the change that we want. And actually Husk has launched a Helios program, which is a leadership development program for which we have already recruited uh, MBAs out of uh, IIMs and ISP in India and some other reputed institutes uh, across the world. And the program really brings uh, these uh, uh, candidates who have aspirations and who are hungry to innovate, who are hungry to use the power of AI and we are willing to train them on the leadership skills so that we can together, in our case, in Husk case, we are planning to scale the company by 100x over the next 10 years. We can together scale the company at 100x and change the world to a better future where our customers in the rural and peri-urban areas of the world, mostly global south, uh, uh, prospers as we create a new energy economy in these uh, societies and communities. In today's uh, world, when you talk about renewable energy and things of that nature, it sounds very boring. It is large scale solar PV or windmill. Uh, but it can be also very cool if you apply uh, technology of today, which is predictive AI and uh, related stuff. And uh, you can actually do very cool stuff in the energy world, which traditionally doesn't sound very exciting. In the world, we have very cool things happening in this company. And I'm so encouraged by the new generation that cares about the planet, that cares that we should not increase temperature by more than 1.5 degrees Celsius.